I took I one one time I took out this dude. He was in his nineties, you know, and uh, he's like maybe ninety. I don't know. He was really old, and you know I was going mellow with him, and I knew there'd be fish in the rat hole down at Kings, but getting him down there, you know, you got to walk down a little cliff and everything. So yeah, I'm like, wow, well, I'd like to take you in the rat hole. Do you think you could do it? He's like, well, I'd like to do it before I die. So it was him and his son, you know? So, dude, I just... How old was the son? 79? Yeah, he was like 70, <laughs> man. I don't know. Man, I took him bound. out there, man. I just held his... I just held on to him, you know? I got him out there in the rat hole. You know, he was out in the dynamic of the surf, and he caught fish in the rat hole, you know? I just kind of, like, was right there with him. It was fucking awesome. Hey. Welcome to the Surfcasters Journal Night Shift Podcast. Our mission is to share our passion of surf fishing by bringing you interviews and conversations with some of the sport's most fascinating people. I'm your host, Zeno Roman, co-founder of Surfcasters Journal at surfcastersjournal.com. So let's jump right into today's episode. We got something different for you this week. Tommy and Dennis are shooting the breeze with Bill Wetzel, talking about everything and anything about guiding, life, and fishing. I got my t-shirt on. Did you notice? It's fantastic. It was the first t-shirt I took out of the drawer today, and this is what it was. I'm like, wow, it's an omen. Surfcast's journal is the world's greatest t-shirt company disguised as a magazine. On the internet. On the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, my God. So, yeah, man. Let's talk about Instagram. Well, well first of all, we're really happy that you're here. Thanks, Thanks. for coming out. Can I we curse? Know, you yeah. You can. Yeah, we'll put, I'll try not to, though. Um, we know how busy you are. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how I do it either. we'll talk about. But uh, <laughs> you managed to uh, spare us a little bit of time and drive out here to the we lettuce farm. It. We do appreciate that. Now, in your daily routine... You draw. You work in Nassau County, right? I did. I used to work in Hempstead, but now I am in uh, West Brentwood. That's close to where I work, too. Yeah. All right, so that's not that bad. So it's an hour for me to get to West Brentwood from my house. Now, when you go and do a charter in Montauk Point after work, do you go home first? Or you go no, straight? man, I go straight. I get, I get off at uh, 4.30, 6.30 charter. Bang. I mean, it's I'm right there at 6.30. I just make it. You know, I, I, I pull over. I change. I get naked in some side of the road. And What what side of the road? I'm I, I, well, I got a spot, man. <laughs> I got a lot of spots. 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of spots. Sometimes you can you just get naked in the middle of Montauk. Dude, what, I got to tell you something. One, one time I'm in front of, my, I'm in front of Johnny's, right? Uh, and I, I have all my clothes off, but I'm in my underwear, but I'm in between my two doors, right? This lady comes by. She's like, you're disgusting. You're definitely not a local. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not, but I'm here every day. And she was probably from Manhattan or something, you know? I mean, this is what we do in Montauk. We get, get naked, we change, we put our wetsuits on. Everybody does that. I do. Maybe not on the main street Dude, of the town. It right? used to be all waiters, right? We used to walk in waiters. It was common. Now you walk in waiters, everybody looks at you like you're an alien or something. I in Montauk. Guess. No? You don't think so? No, I think you could still get away with, with waiters. Yeah. Yeah. I wear waders half the time I'm there. It's just not as extreme. Is it looked down upon now? Who wears white boots anymore there? Very few. No. The whole town used to wear white boots. Not been, the whole town, but you know what I mean. A lot, a, a I, lot more. I grew up uh, in, in fishing taught that that was whack, right? Like people in like a white boot brigade or whatever. I wish I had them now. I'd be comfortable just to throw them on and not get your feet wet. I rock the extra tufts. Yeah. When I'm extreme porgy fishing. Yeah. I even thought about getting corkers. Not uh, not corkers. Grondins. No, uh, the shoes with the holes in them. Crocs. I have a pair. Is that giving up on life as yeah. a punk rocker? A little bit. A little bit. To buy Crocs? Yeah, a little bit. Off of Amazon? Yeah, but they're good. So you slip in, you slip out. Yeah, man. 
man. Getting out of the truck, getting into the truck, you know, just a good slip on. Yeah, I'm, I'm Gotta pee in the this, middle like, of the night. Not caring stage anymore. You I hear you. Why are you dyeing your beard? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> he, he cares. I don't know. So, Bill, how many nights a week are you doing this? Now I'm not doing it as much as I did. You know, I mean, next week I'm doing five nights, six nights. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> this week's four nights, you know, but like three nights now. From, and, and, well, you know, I don't know. During during uh, the fall, I'm going to be doing more. Right now, I have baseball. My son's baseball, so that's, you know, taking a lot of priority. So, but I am going out at night sometimes alone, which is nice. You know, but that's like two o'clock in the morning, shifts. Without a charter. Without a charter, yeah. And and what time do you leave for work in the morning? I get up at six thirty, and uh, what time do I leave? Mm, between seven o five and seven fifteen, and then I got to be to work at eight. I get at work at eight and work till four thirty. Hop in my truck. Then I'm off to Montauk usually. And, you know, I mean, this year I'm doing a little bit less, but in years past, it's, you know, it's basically like Monday, Tuesday, like a Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe two days, maybe one day off, especially in June. June always picks up. And then, you know, in August, I don't, it, it seems seemingly, I don't fish as much, but actually it's it's a lot more work because we're doing you're doing the trophy trips you know and it's, it's, that's just takes a lot out of me plus you got to get the eels you got to go everywhere to get freaking good eels how long is the charter uh well it used to be six, well the trophy trips can be anywhere from uh 6 to I want 11 hours once so <laughs> you know if I want to keep going you know but this year they they went down from 6 to 5 just because I am trying to rest myself but then so you, you basically know. don't sleep I mean by the time you get home it's what no nah, well like, you know one or two I, well this year I get home earlier yeah I get home at like 1.30 last year it was like 2.33 every night and then I get three hours so that extra hour I have to say is helping this year but at the same time, I want to do that extra hour. Like last night, I was fishing. I was just telling you before, I was fishing last night. We were done in five hours. I'm like, what the hell, man? I want to, I want to go. I want, I want that one extra hour because there's one more spot I want to hit. But then, you know, I got to be home. Do guess. you find when you're ridiculously tired, you make poor food choices? <laughs> <laughs> I find that if I have zero sleep from fishing, like one, two hours sleep, when the roach coach comes in the morning at work, I will gravitate to the section of that food truck that I never, ever buy food from. Like the more tired I am, the crappier I eat. Like I will make, I will grab things I would never grab on a full night's sleep. I feel like, oh, look at all this exercise I'm getting. Oh, I can handle that bagel. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you eat what's it was called the barge. Oh what's man, the, remember that at Ronnie's? Oh my god, that was freaking great. Yeah, I think it's basically a foot long hero. Yeah, with a dozen eggs on it. Like I don't even know what I was think on. It had, like it had three or four eggs, and ham, cheese, bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and a hero. And then you had to get the uh, 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 homemade orange juice, the fresh squeezed. That was more expensive, but you know. Yeah, it's healthy. It's you know. You gotta get it. <laughs> now, where did you grow up? You grew up in Ohio, right? I grew up in Ohio. To what age? Until I was 13 or 14, I think. That's probably why you don't have the full Long Island accent. Dude, my Long Island accent sucks. I freaking hate it. I wish I could go get my Ohio accent. I think you have a tinge. There's a twinge. Well, I do say water. It's not water. It's water. Well, what is the Ohio accent? Pop instead of soda. I don't say uh, that, though. I say soda. Pop. Pop, you know, and it's like a little bit drawn out, you know. Like, let's go down fish. Hey, Bill, want to go down fishing? You know, <laughs> what part of Ohio was it? Sandusky. Sand. I have a friend that lives in Sandusky. Ever go to Cedar Point, man? No. Greatest music park in the world. You like roller coasters? Not really. Uh, go to Cedar Point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that lives in Sandusky. Grew up in. Uh, we grew up fishing uh, Lake Erie in the Little Portage River. Fishing at the end, I mean, in the boondocks. We call them the boondocks or the dikes. I have a lot of stories revolving around that. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and you came here when you were fourteen. 
uh, Long thir- Island? Uh, 13 or 14. Okay. I think it's might have been 14. Was that a culture shock? Oh, dude. I, 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 moved from all, I moved to one house I lived in all my life, and we moved to Woodhaven, Queens. And uh, I remember my first day of school. I didn't even know you moved to Queens. No, dude, Woodhaven, Queens. I remember my first day of school. I couldn't write my name because my hands were shaking so bad. Really? Yeah, I was fucked up. Interesting. You know? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like too much high school, too much, or you know, I so was you just graduated high school in Queens. No, no, no. I went to Franklin K. Lane, second high school, second largest high school in the world. Frank- and went while I was in Queens. Franklin K. Lane is also a famous graffiti spot, but we won't get into oh, that. Okay. We won't get into that on this podcast. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Then I went to Locust Valley, like from one extreme to the other. Yeah, you're a man of extremes. Well, you know. That's interesting. That's it. And that's where you spent, like, did you go to college? Yeah, with Stony Brook. Oh, all right. Oh, my God, dude. We used to kill off Crane's Neck Point. You ever fish Crane's Neck? Oh, I shouldn't say that, right? But I, I tell you what, back then, that was in the 80s, we used to get the mackerel run the first week of May. Oh, my God. I used to sneak my uh, little Honda, had a Honda Accord. I used to sneak that in there. Did at you night. dorm at uh, Yeah, I dormed there. Yeah. Oh. Dries your dorm. <laughs> Got in trouble, a lot of trouble. Were you a frat guy? No, 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 no. Never did that. I was. I'm not, I'm not a club guy. I'm not a frat club guy. You're a lone wolf. I'm a lone wolf. <laughs> Dude, before I started guiding, I wouldn't tell anybody anything. I was like alone all the time. You spent. Did you ha- have a camper? Out in Montauk at one point? No, I always had a truck. A truck? Yeah. yeah. Or before that, I had a car. My first my first car out in Montauk was a 1975 Ford Granada with a rusted hole in the fender. Badass. When did you first start making trips out to Montauk? Mm, that had to How be, old were you? That had to be 82, 70, uh, 17. 17? 17. As soon as I got my license. Boom! You know, I was right. Re- re- we didn't have inter- internet, cell phones. You know, you, you read on the uh, in the fisherman. The, they used to call it the Bible. Read in the fisherman, all about Montauk. And well, what got you hip to that? Reading the fisherman, like what? Uh, well, that's all they talked about was Montauk. You know, and I started fishing it. Then I became freaking obsessed with it. But were you surf fishing before that? Yeah, I was fishing in Bayville. I would fish every freaking day. You know, baby. Well, back then I was also not only fishing Babel, all the North Shore. I fished in Nissi, uh, you know, all over the North Shore. I was in, like a North Shore guy. I really didn't know anything about the South Shore at like 17, 18. My mother started letting me go out at night. Uh, let me look in heaven. When did she start letting me go out at night at the fish? Probably, I mean, she probably trusted me. I mean, I freaking fished for catfish in Ohio all night long. So I, I would say like 15, man, I was fishing like in the middle of the night in Babel. <sighs> And I thought I was badass. I thought I was like the at the shit nobody. I'm mean, like I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I remember going on Montauk for the first time. I see these guys with these big freaking rods and the spikes on their feet, you know, taped with duct tape and all this shit. I'm like, look at these fucking guys. They don't know what they're. I'm thinking, you know, I'm like 17. They don't know what they're doing. I got my seven foot rod, no belt. I go under the light, no belt, no qu- a seven foot rod, you know, like 10 pound test probably line. <laughs> I didn't know what the, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And you were alone, or you had Cocky. a partner? Uh, I was alone. And you were making that trip often? Uh, not at first, but then you know, as time went on, I graduated high school, and then every chance I got, I was going there solo, fishing tur- Turtle Cove, man, with no partner. No partner. I couldn't figure out Turtle Cove. You know, you, you look at you look at Turtle Cove, you think what? Outgoing currents moving left to right, incoming currents moving right to left, and you would think outgoing current, right? Because it's going to come around the point, but no, 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 it's incoming current because it builds up in the cove and pushes out at the pillbox. I didn't know that. Some guy told me that. Did you find any mentors out there, or you were just totally. Eventually, I met Charlie farting in his waders and uh, at Comset State Park. Like, that was... Charlie Ruger. Charlie Ruger, yeah. So that was probably like, uh, I don't know, 90 or 91. Maybe 90. So 10 years. So that was a different crew. <laughs> that was a back... That was that was the crew back then, and I got in with that crew because of Charlie. 
you know charlie introduced me to everybody but you know still we would share information but we wouldn't fish together that much we would just kind of but you're a nice guy bill it took you 10 years to find yourself a mentor dude i was alone i I've, you go out you, you you go out on freaking two o'clock in the morning who, who do you who's gonna go with you at you know i don't know 20 years old 21 years old who goes with you you know who's gonna go, who's gonna do that? I didn't want to fish with anybody. It's like I, these are my fucking spots, man. I learned my spots. I don't want to tell anybody. I'm still kind of like that, even though y'all you think, oh, he's a guy. He tells everybody. I don't tell anybody anything really. You know, I tell general locations, but you know, but you I still tell my have, customers stuff. But but you still have your spots. Yeah, I have places I won't take anybody. I took Tommy to one of those places. I don't right, know. Tommy? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it Sand Eels? That's right. <laughs> Me, we met up to do some filming for the magazine. And, uh, you know, I go meet him at this spot. Like, we went to a pre-spot to get dressed before you got to the actual spot because we had to run when we got to the actual spot. But on the way out, on the way out, these freaking clouds are coming in. It's like you know a storm from you know hell. Ghostbusters, the storm that's above, like when Zool comes out. And it was crazy, man. That's what it looked it like. It was one of the most craziest storms, I think, ever that and I've I been in. I turned to him. I said, no way, bro. Yeah. Oh, we're good. <laughs> He's going, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I wouldn't go out in that. I don't know. He's like, oh, we're good. This Meanwhile, we almost got freaking killed. I have it on video. Like, I have clips of it. And it went from flat, like flat, flat water to on the sound, like four foot breaking waves. With, you got to show that, man. We, like, we had to hide, uh, we had to hide under, a, like, we were under someone's, uh, dock at one point like a we were under the friggin uh no there was a there was there was a like a bluff in the back of us we found this like little hump of beach because there was water everywhere you know from the sound there was this little hump of beach and we found this little spot underneath a pine tree right and the pine trees hanging out over the water so it's not like there was any beach available there was just this little tiny spot of beach that we found we were out on a bar man like running on this bar like how, how far was that bar out like 30 30 yards or so, maybe 40. Yeah, it got really wild. I mean, it came in like... Like a tornado. Like a tornado. With no with no tornado. We could have definitely <laughs> got hurt. That. Yeah, but the, in the end, man, the fish were there. Yeah, not for me, though. I got schooled. Well, you're the one who wanted to go. I said no. No, I got schooled. Big time. Yeah, but that's because I was doing a little trick I wouldn't tell him about. Yeah, he he one fish after the other after the other after the other and I'm like, "What the fuck?" And in my mind I'm like, "I don't suck He's this gonna, bad." Here's what he said. Here's the quote. "You make me look like a fucking amateur." And he was I thought he was going to break his rod in half. <laughs> and head. And I outrageous. couldn't take it anymore. I just outrageous I, fishing. I, 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 I eventually told him, I'm like, oh, man, you just got to, we were fishing needlefish because it was all sand eels. I'm like, all you got to do is twitch your rod like, you know, it's a pencil popper. And as soon as he did that, you know, we were both into fish. Then he wanted to stay. And I'm like, man, I got to work in the morning, dude. It's like yeah. three or four in the morning or whatever it was. Yeah, no, that's the, la when you get brought to a spot by someone you know you could never go back to. Right. Because it's not yours. Exactly. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, man. I'm never going to be able to come back here. I you never can't. went back there? No. Oh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Respect that. The, this appreciate rule. that. There's mm. rules to the game. A lot of people don't follow those rules. <laughs> that's, a whole other, that's a whole other show on rules. Yeah, there's rules to the game. But I never went back. And I knew I could never go back. And I didn't want to. Wow, that's very impressive. I was like, I got to soak this up. Like, but you, you know. You got to be careful with the club guys where you take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you gotta have you gotta have a set of rules. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, when did you find from going to Montauk for ten years or whatever? When did you build up the confidence to say like I'm gonna make like a side hustle out of this? Like a oh, dude, side it took career? me a while to do that. I mean, like what inspired you to do that? Did you have another? Did you meet another uh, guy? Did you know no, like else? I had like. <laughs> One of my friends, Pete, you know, I was taking him out and his equipment always, you know, he had never had his equipment up to date. So I had to help him with that. And then he would bring a friend. So I'd have to help. You know, it was always helping somebody. It wasn't really that. I, you know, I think I've said this before and this is true. I'm like, 
I, I was thinking several things. One of the things was I'm like, no woman is ever going to, I'm never going to get married because nobody's ever going to put up with my fishing. If I make up a business, this is actually what I thought. If I made a business, then they wouldn't have a choice. And you, and also I figured if, if I was guiding, I would have to take people out in, in no matter what c- condition it was, which would in turn make me a better fisherman because I would have to find fish. Okay, okay. And, and things where people say, fuck that, I'm not going out, and I have to I have to go out and I have to find fish. So in turn, I thought at the time that would make me a better fisherman, you know, which I think it did. Who was the first? What was the first person you took out that you didn't know? Like the first stranger that you took out? Like what was I that think, like? You know, I think it was, uh, I think I remember his name. Uh, who's that dude? Uh, Sullivan. Ed Sullivan. It was Ed Sullivan. The Ed Sullivan? The Ed Sullivan. No, this was a different <laughs> Ed Sullivan. His wife was Maggie. I think he was my first. I, he might have been my first guy. He had fish? Yeah, fucking. He he had one night. I remember the first time he yielded with me, and uh, the night before, I was on the north side of Montauk, and I had fish to like thirty-five pounds. Like I had multiple thirties on eels, and I knew I'm gonna get him in the fish. I'm like, oh man, conditions are just like the night before. I'm like, Dad, you're gonna be in the fish, and he could not get himself to drop his freaking rod. You know, you get the hit, you drop your rod. He couldn't, he couldn't get himself to do it. So he missed a lot of fish, but he got five fish, I think up to 30 pounds that night anyway. That must have been. So I would picture you had like a pit in your stomach, like someone's paying me. They got, I hope they catch something. You know what I'm saying? Was that like on your, uh, no, I'm, yeah, I'm never, asking you to think back well, through, it, the, through well, the ages. I, I, you know what? The, initially when the phone calls started to come in, which were not many. Where did you advertise back then? How did, oh, dude! <laughs> I I I made up these these stupid brochures. I mean, I still have stupid brochures. They're just freaking black and white pieces of shit, basically. But I made up these and I went to Wall Street in my little shorts, khaki shorts, and, and like you know, wh- who's the guy? The guy Harvey shirt, you know? So I'm like, so oh. you look like the croc. I so, think you do look like the crocodile hunter. Yeah, man. Way. So I went. I went. Uh, I'm like. Going, I'm like, oh, where do these people hang out? So I'm going to like restaurants and stuff, and I'm, oh, I'm giving away. Not, not one person called me back. I took a day off of work to do that, you know. And then I was, I was advertising in the Fisherman, which was kind of expensive, but that wasn't working either. And it turned out to be, people would go out with me, and it was word of mouth. That was the best thing. Okay, that's it. That's it. It's word what of year mouth. Did you start? Mm, that's a good question. 90s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 90s. Uh, let me see. This is, well, this is my 22nd year. I can't. Don't make so, me do come on, math. Do bro. the math. <laughs> don't make me do math. So what? Uh, so, uh, it's 96, right? No, 98. No, that would be 20. No, that's 20. 96. 96. <laughs> Carry the two. 96, but I didn't, have, I didn't have my guide license at first. I just got it kind of, I was... Then I then I got my license. But when you first started doing it, was it Melnick was not Melnick, uh, Melton, Tom Melton. It was me and Tom Melton, which was great because we used to share information. He he was what, great. He, w- he was the only other guy. Yeah, Fred Galifaro just retired from guiding. He was like the original surf fishing guide, and then Melton was in there, and you know me and Tom would you know always he would. You know, we would just share information. Oh, I got fish over here. Oh, I got fish. You should take them over there, you know. Was there any resistance with um, whoever were, like, the main players at that time out in Montauk? Were they giving you any trouble? What do you mean, or, like, the locals and shit? Yeah, were they like, who's this guy now? Well, He's a guide here. Here's or? the thing. Here's the thing. Most of the locals, I, I like, kind of knew already. And they knew. I mean, I didn't really know them. Some of them I did. Some but you of had them their I respect didn't. enough. But they, they knew I was out there every fucking day. You know, they they knew. So I I never really got any shit. You know who I got the shit from? From the people coming from like out of state who fish there once a fucking month. You know, and they then they 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 think they know everything about my. Oh, are you freaking kidding me? You know, so you just I busted right you know, in there. not for nothing. 
I busted my friggin' ass out there. I mean, I love doing it. It's not that I'm, I'm like, you know, bragging or anything, but it's just, just a fact. I busted my ass, man. I fished every friggin' day, mostly Montauk. And I still do fish out there all the time. You know, people say, oh, I, I fish seven days a week. Yeah, but you're going out, you know, 45 minute shot, an hour shot. When I go out, it's a six hour shot, you know, four or five this year. So then you got to go to work. I got to go to work. Hardest working man in surf fishing, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Well, you know, you got to love it. My mother, before she passed away, she says, she goes, uh, Billy, do you, she was talking about surf fishing. Do you still love it? I'm just like, I, I shook, I'm like, shrug my shoulders. And I said, I'm like, yeah. She's like, yeah, but do you love it? I go, yeah. She goes, well, if, if you won the lottery, if you won a billion dollars, would you still guide? I'm like, yeah. She's like, then you still love it. <laughs> you know? Wow. It's like, a billion, yep. a billion? Dude, I would do it. I would, uh, you know, I would almost do it for free. I mean, I, it's some guys I take out, I've been taking out for years. I feel bad even, you know, they're like my friend. I'm taking them out, you know? It's like, my wife always goes, yeah, you love your job. I go, yeah, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> you know? You'd be doing it anyway. I remember talking to my dad when I was younger, I was like, oh, I want to have a job that I love. That way it's like, you're not working every day. And my dad was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, you got a, good, you got a, you got a job you love too, man. Yeah, but he was like, you're good at it. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking, a completely different planet. <laughs> um, I want to bring up that both my co-host Dennis and you, Bill Wetzel, were part of probably one of the best surf fishing fucking movies ever made. The eight minute. It's eight minutes. It's eight a short. Minutes. It's a short. In and out. Um, made by Animal, a magazine from Manhattan. Yeah. And it is the be I can't think of a better surf fishing film or short that's available for people to watch than this. You can watch it on YouTube. It came out four years ago. I no, think 2013. it's like six years now. It's on my log. If you go to my five log, it's, it's, it's on my log. So five that years ago. In December we went. And December 5th, I think it was. No, if, December 5th. If you Google uh, Surfcasters Montauk, it's usually the first thing that comes and out. I remember it's Surfcasters Montauk Animal. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, for the love of God, watch this thing. It's a masterpiece of of just a melange of textures and moods. I like what Melnitz said. If you're going to die, you might as well die like a man. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. There's a lot of good quotes. But I, I, like that on my too. Too. But I remember Dennis called me and said, oh, I'm working with this magazine and we want to do a fishing thing. And it was December. Right. And I was like, I don't know, man. I... I and I tried to get him in touch with some people. And then I got him in touch with you, Bill. Well, no, you, well, first of all, you or Tom was probably, Tom's what really made that film happen. Because right. Because I, so, I didn't yeah. know any of you guys. I mean, I knew Tommy, of course, but uh, I had asked him, like, if he could let, maybe, you know, make some calls for me. And no one won. I don't, if I remember correctly, because it was also, we also had like uh, at the magazine, uh, Animal, they had some other people dealing with a lot of those calls. But f if I recall, um, no one wanted to deal with me. <laughs> really? <laughs> or no one was interested. They were like, dude, it's, you know, we don't really want to blow it up out here. And it's December, like you said. And I think, um, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I think you're the only person that Tommy convinced. Uh, well, I think he just didn't convince me. I'm like, it. okay, I'll do that. You know, it sounds cool. You and, know, and it can't. I couldn't believe it because I was in touch with you that day, and I did, you had fish. Yeah, which was amazing. Right away, I couldn't believe it. It was a. Uh, it was funny because we had driven out big we water. Like, we had like big. four vehicles. There was like a whole crew. Dude, man, it was a. Oh my god, I couldn't and believe it. they just got out of the car. It was like. Eight to ten people. I don't know. It was, I was pouring like, rain. Shit. Pouring out. We met Bill in town. I had never met him before. So I quickly introduced myself because it was pouring out. Yeah. And then you were like, all right, man, let's go. Jump in the cars and follow me. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Like we didn't, I hadn't even really met yet. And um, I, was, I think I was trying to catch the tide. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> December. I, I want to say it was December 5th. Could have been a little bit later. 
It was around that week. Anyway, so then we followed you up to a spot on the south side, and um, and then Bill gets out and like looks in the back of my car, and he's like, he's like, oh, you fish? I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I fish. He's like, what? What's that shit? Like the rod was broken. <laughs> is, I had like when you, the broken. worst gear. Dennis was in his artisanal fishing stage, where it's all you know bespoke vintage equipment. Vintage. He, he had that rubberized, shit was not rubberized Goodyear waders. Oh my god! Probably some sort like a green pen. Oh yeah, definitely had a greenie. And I had a, I think one of my like guides what? was broke, broken yeah, or something. Broken. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It'll work, you know. And Bill's like, I, I don't know, man. You know, he's like, why don't you, here, borrow some stuff from me. And, and I was like, well, I kind of, I'm kind of making the video. Is that what like, I said? Or I said, that shit's not going to work. Yeah. Well, I think you were just kind of <laughs> laughing at me. You're like, who's this kook going to make this film, you know, with this, all this broken gear in his trunk. And, uh. And so I was like, oh, you, you said, oh, why don't you just come out and fish with me? I was like, oh, I, well, I don't know. I guess, yeah. And then, like, I asked the guys if that was okay. And they said, yeah. And said, so you lent me a rod. And I Corkers think I still rod. had, I think, yeah. Back you, then I would lend out corkers. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> you, did, you did give me a pair of corkers. I had some real shitty waders and, like, a shitty, like, raincoat. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then first cast. Bang. <laughs> Bill had a fish on the first cast where we had already, con they, everyone had convinced us that there was not going to be any fish footage because um, the fish were long gone at that point. I was skeptical. Yeah, first cast. But I cannot, I know I've said it five times already in this podcast, but it is the best depiction of Montauk surf fishing ever recorded. Such a quick one too. On film. We it, did three hours, man. We I was with him like three hours. Yeah. But to have that, like, to be, it was kind of thrown together. Like, it just came together quickly. Right. Well, they had a really exceptional staff. Yeah, and, can, and Are they even a magazine anymore? No, they're not. They, they were owned by an uh, advertising firm in the city, and they're no longer around. However, uh, a lot of the kids that were working on that project were, like, mega ultra talented, especially the editors. Um the film, the filming guys. Bill always talks about the one kid. He's crazy. He's like out there with us. Were they like surf photographers? No. Uh, one, the one guy's out there in waders, man, and he's he, we're we're out on the rocks. I'm like, you're gonna get killed, man. He's just no belt on, just a pair of waders, no corkers. He's out there with the camera. I'm like, that camera's going down, but it did not. And how about the uh, interview too? I, I I don't know how they set that up. They asked me, uh, where's a good place we could do an interview, and I, I just said, uh, uh, oh Murphy's. Irish, yeah, the Irish I said oh Murphy's, and. Uh, Next thing I know, we're going into O'Murphy's, man, and they got these freaking, they, they got half the place, and lights everywhere, and I felt like a goddamn movie star. They're like, who is this guy? You know, I'm all wet. I get my hats all messed up. I'm all wet. I'm all, if you look at the video, I just got done fishing, and then after that, I went fishing again. I wanted to go with him, but he wouldn't go. I didn't have any fish anyway the rest of the night. I was like, I'm going to Shag, baby. Southwest wins. But then you actually did me a big favor because then you made some calls for me. I think you called Eric the Tree Man. Oh, yeah, and Eric. And maybe Toad. or so. You kind of vouched for me that because a lot of these guys were sort of seemed reluctant to yeah. do it. Um, and, and that way I was Melnick. able to set up uh, other interviews for the next, the following yeah, day. Yeah, it came out great. So it's thanks to both of you guys, really. Again, watch it on YouTube. Yeah, thank what you. What do you search doing? for it on YouTube? Surfcasters, Montauk. Surfcasters, Montauk. Animal. 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 Some other dude did something with it. Did you see that? I don't know what it was. Kind of cool. Yeah. I Well, somebody took it and re-edited it, which I wasn't too thrilled about. What? Yeah, it's kind of weird. And put, like, like text on it, like things I, that Bill was I, saying. <laughs> Yeah, something or Melnick was saying or yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was. <laughs> All right, kind of weird. Right. Well, you, we you did put it on the internet. Yeah, you know. When did you start the Surf Rats Ball website? www.surfratsball.com. Oh, dude, man, long time or or www.longislandsurffishing.com. Long Island the original. I started it as uh, it was a free log. It was my log. Okay. 
you know, it was just to get people to see, you know, to, to book me and see where I was fishing, you know, um, and my buddy, Mike Biolsi says, he says, Willie, you should, you should charge for that log. I'm like, no, no way, man. Nobody's going to pay for that shit. So I started charging, you know, whatever it was at the time, 20 bucks for the year. And, and, and then I got somebody to do the, uh, forums and then I'm like, well, you know, the log's not enough. I got to have the forum. So I did started doing you know all the stuff in the forum the 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 uh reading the beach the videos and all that stuff and then one thing led to another and then i started doing the tournaments so i don't know when the f- it started but the tournament started this is our 13th year so the you know the june surf rats ball tournament is our 13th year and i think i'm not sure but as far as i know it was the original catch and release surf fishing tournament i think i haven't heard of any others kudos, before that my friend thank you dude kudos I find it, uh, even from back then, it probably had the best content yeah. out of all the surf fishing. Uh, in that in that genre, the striped bass website genre, right. which is kind of not... Some of the main players aren't around anymore. Well, I did really. it, man, to get, to get rid of the bullshit. You know, I read, like, articles. Like, here's an article. Uh, here's here's an article. I don't know who writes, like, writes this shit, but I, I literally don't know, but I, I'll read something like... Uh, uh, oh man, uh, I, I, telling you how to fish full moons. You got to go deep on the full moons. You got to fish deep. You got to fish slow. Full moons. You got to do this. You got to do that. And then in the same sense, I don't like full moons. Like, what, what, what are you writing about, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I and some of the equipment, this, this, and that. I just wanted to. And, and people fighting. People fight on my website. I just kick them off. You know. I mean, that's it. You're off, man. I don't need your shit. I find that the the twenty bucks a year is a slight thirty five, brother. How much is it now? Thirty five. Oh my gosh, 20, it's old. Twenty twenty bucks, a long time ago. Yeah, well, the thirty five bucks a year. Well, I'm thinking, I'm talking old school. Some Power Pro. When it was, it thirty five. That is like a barrier that keeps out a giant chunk of noise. Yeah. That you would normally hear. And if I get the noise, I kick you out anyway. You know, I just give you, I, I don't care if you're there for 10 months, you start saying shit, I just, I'll give you a refund. I don't want to deal with you. One of my favorite things on your website is you call people herbs. Oh, herbs. <laughs> Which is like so street. The herbs. It's so... <laughs> I hate googs, man. Googs, come on. I, yeah, I gotta Googan, call them. Like googs, I like herbs. Googs and googans, and the terms for uh, novice fishermen or clueless fishermen. You know, that's one thing. But to use herb, which is like Queens 1990s, 1990s hip hop Queens slang. Is that what that is? Yes. Yeah, it, the herb. I when you first started, like I saw you calling people herbs. I was like, damn, Bill's. From the streets. <laughs> I got a little. <laughs> and now that we've discovered that you moved from Ohio, I'm very, I'm very cultured <laughs> to Woodhaven. It's uh, it's all coming together right now. Yeah, there you go. It's amazing. I got a little of it. Why don't you talk a little bit about the charity side of it? Oh yeah, so because that's pretty awesome well, for the it, tournament. Yeah, yeah, for the tournament. So it's the it, you know this name is the Surf Rats Ball June Striper Tournament. It covers the East and the West Coast. So and then we get all, tons of donations from individuals, from companies. You know, Super Strike, Lama Glass, Century. You know, um, Stormer, on and on. Tommy knows because he does all the advertising for it. I've I drive la- him crazy. Yeah, I've laid out. You don't know anything until you've laid out an ad with a hundred something sponsors on it <laughs> that are constantly changing. But then you know, you know, we have the tournament. It goes from the month of June, and the guys are really competitive. And then, uh, and uh, this year's July twenty first, we have. The Shindig. I don't know why I named it the Shindig. I just thought it was a cool name. And basically, it's a big barbecue. So we get like free ribs. Everybody eats for free. Ribs, burgers, you know, and, you know, some great surf casters there. Moose, Don Moose always shows up. Fred Galafaro. What's, you What's the date on that again? Uh, I think it's July 21st. This will be out by then. Saturday. Yeah, surfratsbolt.com. So Saturday, it's over at uh, Tightlines Bait and Tackle. Tightlines Bait and Tackle, Sag Harbor, July 21st. 
the Surf Rats Ball shindig. The ice cream alone. Oh, the ice cream <laughs> from uh, from uh, Snowflake Ice Cream in Riverhead. Oh, from Stu. Dear, dear Snowflake Ice Cream in Riverhead, the free pints of ice cream that are available to every single human being at the Surf Rats Ball shindig is both a blessing and a curse because how... I can't it's <laughs> sick. It's so much, man. Unlimited ice cream for free. It's homemade. It's just... It's unstoppable. So, but anyway, all everything goes to more for kids with terminally ill illnesses, you know, like cancer. So it goes... Every every bit of it goes to there. I mean, we don't. I don't take one dime. I just say, here's the cash we made, and that's it. What inspired you to put the West Coast in the contest, too. I find that very cool. Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> Lee, uh, the weatherman on my website, Lee, uh, why can't I think of his last name? Lee Solomon. So uh, he caught a fish one year and it was like a 30-something pound. I don't know if it would have placed or not, but he was like, oh, dude, you know, we're at West Coast. We don't have anybody. We don't have anything like this. And I sent... I. I I got an extra trophy that year and I sent it to him. I'm like, you know what? We could do this. We could make it West Coast too. What what the hell? You know, it's a, it's a, it, it's based on, you know, internet, it's based on, you know, um you know, it, I mean, it, the way it's set up, anybody could do it. I welcome you know? our West Coast brothers. Yeah, into man. The, I think Hell it's yeah. cool, man. I love. They're I, hardcore. That one dude who makes the uh, plugs. Who's that guy? NorCal Cat. Uh, oh, he does. Uh, yeah, I heard guy. of him. No, Winch. No, Winch Master. No, oh, really? Wow. You know, there's another dude though. He always turns me into. Well, that's Sean. He moved there, but I. I, I get into. I get into like YouTube West Coast surf casting like wormholes. I watched one like guys catching halibuts like off of a jetty. It was I was like hooked on it. I was like, "Wow, this is this is this is cool." I used to book this dude. He he was uh he would book me every year and he'd come in from Hawaii just to fish with me. That's 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 the reason he was there. He'd come to fish with me. He would say he fished off these huge freaking cliffs. He said that in Hawaii we fish off these huge cliffs and it's like literally like you're hanging off the edge of the freaking cliffs. Ever hear of that? Nah, well, I guess you could google it. I never have, but I watched some cool like spear fishing Hawaii videos. Actually, you know what? I did see a video from Hawaii, and the guy was perched on a cliff, and he caught, I don't even know what it was. A crazy fish, right? An opa? Although, I don't know. What was that other, those other guys you, you were showing me? Was that Australia? Yeah, that's the Australian guys. Yeah. Put me in Australia. Watch what happens. <laughs> Fly me over there. Watch how crazy I go. <laughs> a lot of sharks. Yeah, man. A lot of sharks. Did you hear about that great white supposedly I had on last year? I tell you that. (laughs) I swear to God, man. So I'm out. I have a charter, uh, and I'm out on Jones Reef, and I'm wetsuiting, which is a rare moment. But I got my wetsuit on. We're way the hell out there. So we're throwing eels, and I see this freaking fish break, man. I mean, it was bigger than this table. I mean, you could see it just. Come we're, up, sitting you know? at a, we're sitting at a 25 foot long yeah, 25 table. table. <laughs> so artisan hand he, he freaking comes up and, table. and I have I have my uh, GSB the original GSB 132 1M with a Vaughn style 275 50 pound test power pro lag drag almost socked down because I'm eeling and this freaking thing is just smoking it you know and then my customer goes that's a big fish that's a big fish I'm like no 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 man that's a shark that's what that is That's. A, are you sure oh I'm sure so I had him on for like 30 seconds and uh broke the line and my customer looks over at me and he's like bill man i don't feel comfortable being out here anymore i go neither do i but we just kept fishing <laughs> and the next day he lives out there and then the next day he calls me to tell me he spoke to uh some of the uh commercial guys that fish he said there was juvenile great whites reported off of jones reef the last couple days i'm like get the fuck out of here man oh give me oh man jones reef has always creeped me out man i've had things happen to me there i had sharks hit i was catching small bluefish on the south shore and all of a sudden like this was like a four pound bluefish and all of a sudden my whole body got pulled sideways and i i was up over my waist in the water but i got pulled sideways and bit off 
And I was like, ah, that's strange, you know. So I come back, retie, cast back, same thing again, hook up right away, small bluefish. I could feel it jangling around. And then I felt something pass between me and the bluefish into my line. And it was pulling me to the side. And what do you mean? It was on your line that it didn't hit the bluefish? The first just... one hit the bluefish. The second one was between me and the bluefish, and it tugged my line oh like my sideways. Oh, my God, man. And At I, night. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> and I backed up, and the next day. Were you out in the water? Yeah. And then oh the next God. day. They were filming at a local beach near there. Um, like those bar sharks were s- surfing up onto the beach. There was like all this YouTube footage eating bunker, like flopping back and forth. I don't know. They were like pit bull sized things or whatever. But yeah. But still, you look at shark statistics. You have a better chance of being hit by lightning in your house, dude. Than but being you're putting it, yeah. But oh, of course, that's the general population. But we're in a, <laughs> out there in the fucking two o'clock in the morning with the goddamn yeah, wetsuit, black wetsuit. Yeah, people uh, would know, have been eating already. Yeah, well, that you don't see any skish, skishers left in Montauk, right? I haven't seen a skisher, not one last year, not one. <laughs> because they've been eaten. <laughs> no, because the sharks are there now, man. There are sharks there. <laughs> So that's that's it for skishing. It's over. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't hear anything. I, I, I haven't either. No, nobody. I don't think there's too many sharks. I wouldn't freaking do that shit. I was skishing for sea robins this past summer. <laughs> Did you really skish? Have you skished? Just for sea robins. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done it. I was with my I've nephew. Been no, I was with my nephew just floating around out there. But no, I I don't know anything about skishing. It's not. I don't even want to speak on it because I don't it's want to do my, it, man. It's not my world. I can't comment on it. I don't know anything about it. I don't even want to talk about it. Hey, one dude said, I'll, I'll rewire your house, man, if you come skishing with me. You don't even have to. And I'm like, no, man, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. He's telling me things go bump. He's bumping them in, in the middle of the night. You know, nope. I mean, you're out there, dude. You're out there 300 yards at two o'clock in the morning, drifting with goddamn flippers on. Well, uh, that's insane. It's just, I don't want to do it. No, nope. I'll swim so about 10 agree. feet if I have to. <laughs> yeah, let's all agree right now. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. If you had to pick your favorite um, police academy movie. What? You heard me. That's pretty random. Police Academy yeah. movie? You familiar you with them? I fucking remember Police Academy. That's what that one guy with the sound makes makes the sounds, right? Yeah. You don't familiar, you're not familiar with them? Yeah, O.J. Simpson's in that or something? No, my no. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know. I'm editing that Police out. Academy. <laughs> Police Academy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nah. Not familiar with him? He was out fishing, Tom. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. <laughs> Let's watch movies. I forgot about Please, that. I watched Jaws like a hundred times. Jaws? We got... We got That's dude, why he won't go skishing. We have, we have some dude uh, on the website. It's the greatest friggin' name. The Kittner Kid. He's oh, on that's the web. a kid that got eaten? In yeah, that's the kid that got eaten. He's the, the, oh, it's either the Kittner Kid or the Kittner Boy. That's his name on my website. Is that the freaking awesomest name? I'm like, my God, man, I want that name. Kick him off the website and steal <laughs> yeah, the name. Right. Oh, I'm the Kittner Boy now. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of herbs. <laughs> Bunch of herbs. Now, when in the... Like your season where you're focusing mostly on Montauk, when do you start skipping around to other parts? Is that ah, pre, right away? Pre you know, or? Uh, you know what? I, here's what happens. When will you abandon Montauk? Never. I don't really. In a season, well, kind of. I mean, switch it up. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm always going somewhere else. Like in the beginning of the season, I try. I go west. I'm screwing around, and then Montauk's constantly on my mind. It's weird. It's like a. I don't know what it is. It's like. It's like I'm in love with Montauk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I fished west with you one time, and a guy yelled at us for stealing his chum slick. Oh, shit. shit. Remember that? Man? <laughs> that was fucking funny, man. This dude anchored up in the state channel where you're not even supposed to anchor up. All right. We're and throwing he, we're throwing six-inch wild eyes and, he, and, and, and banging fish. And he had a chum slick out. And we, <laughs> He's not catching shit. And we caught a couple, and the guy's just on the, like, the back part of of his boat. What's that, the stern? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's in the stern of his boat with the biggest sourpuss, and he's just shaking his head back and forth like... <sighs> Like this, dude. We're like we're, we're like seventy five yards from him. I think you and know it, we're on the shore for God's sake. Yeah, and he's just staring at us and he's shaking his head. And I think Bill is like, "What's up?" 
<laughs> I'll catch it. And he's like, some- I, he goes, you are, st-, and he, ha- he had like a, you are stealing my chum slick. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Stealing my chum slick, dude. Oh my god, that oh was fucking god. classic. I remember just looking at Stealing you. My, Stealing my chum slick. Stealing my chum slick. <laughs> Piece of shit. He's not catching anything. <laughs> it was a classic. And I think I was fishing. You lent me one of your wife's rods, and it was pink. Oh, had the uh, Mrs. Wetzel, the Mrs. Yeah. Wetzel rod. <laughs> it has angels on it. I was stealing chum slicks <laughs> with, the, with the Mrs. Wetzel. You were pink, Mrs. Wetzel. Pink and rose colored rod. Wow. That's, a, that's the S class. Yeah, it was cool. We, we caught a couple fish on it. So um, we've got a special uh, gift for our, yeah, we our went, first ever we, well, we uh, guest. We went to 7 Eleven and I saw. A list, like a whole display of keychains. Oh, I thought it was just this Miller Lite I'm drinking. We did buy some Miller Lights. <laughs> yeah, Dennis bought the Miller Lite. I didn't buy the Miller Lite. Um, they had a wall of keychains, and I could pick out whatever I wanted, like with names on it for was you. Was it a tax write off for you? No, and I got you the. <laughs> bad boy. It says oh. bad boy on it. Wow, thanks. <laughs> We'll post a picture of it up. We will on, post uh, a picture of it, and um, you know, I want you to put all your keys on it, and always. I use should wear it. that like on the back of my hat or something. Well, someday, Bill, someone will offer you two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, someone's that, gonna offer me two hundred bucks. It'll be Bad all boy. messed up. <laughs> Bad boy. And the woman was like, uh, the woman that sold it to us at Seven Eleven. She's like, "Why? You're no bad boy. You're nice. You, <laughs> you're no bad boy." And I went, "No." I am a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> she had cool gold teeth. She did. Yeah. Lower rack. Yeah, she had all lower gold all teeth. Lower rack. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Blinged out. I'm getting a gold tooth, Bill. You know that? By the Are time really? this podcast airs, I will have a gold tooth. Get out of here. Yep. Wow. And you're dying here up here. It's a Tom 2.0. You know what's happening to Tom you? Tom 2.0. He's... Uh, Midlife crisis. Getting another tat, too? Yeah, that's, you know, that's... That's without a question. Face tats. I mean, I've yeah. always considered it, but I never knew what to get. You know, I was going to get like a north, east, south, west. But I picture you with like a, <laughs> you know? like a Chinese symbol for strength on your lower back. Like oh, no, no, thanks. Like a tramp stamp or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, <a> tramp stamp? <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it just doesn't go with a fat guy. I don't know. Like nah, if I had muscles. You're looking man. pretty trim, actually. Yeah, we. I commented as you walked up. You know, since I've been fishing again, I'm like, you know, why do I continuously walk on the south side? Why do I torture myself like that? I'm like, I see fucking water. I'm like, oh, it's going to be good. We're, we're going. We're walking in. We're walking in, man. You ready? You ready for the walk? And we get there. It's like a schoolie. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I'm walking every night. I'm walking miles a night over rock. And the south side right now is like, have you been over there yet? Not this year. Dude, no. it's like every rock is like a baseball. And it, the whole south side is full of baseballs. Oh my it, God. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard walk and it's no bullshit. I hurt myself again this year. I hurt the same place. Caswell's hurt myself two years ago on my knee and then it just started getting better. And th- a couple weeks ago, I'm like, wow, my knee's starting to get better. Once again, I wiped out in Caswell's the other day or last week. I freaking did a somersault in the surf. Had blood on my hand. It was a mess. Softball size rock is the worst. Man. Cuddy Hunk was like that, the backside of Cuddy Hunk. Oh, you told like me about f- that. Like I didn't go two over there. miles of that. that I, caught my, I caught my fish in ankle deep of water. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> yeah, you were there uh, three years ago? Yeah, four years like that. ago? That was a great trip. I had so much fun. That was Until my uh, partner left me. That's right. I fished with uh, Ray. Thank God for Ray. Yeah, man. And that was a, not a lot of fish got caught, but then at one night, multiple 40s came up. At all different points of the island. Yeah, was I trip. was one of them. I had a yeah, bigger fish me. on than that. Yeah. Got off. Ray's going. I'm going. I'm going to drop this fish, Ray. I'm going to drop this fish. You're not going to drop it. You're not going to drop it. I'm going. I'm going <laughs> to drop it, man. I'm going to drop it. I dropped it. Now, do you have a? Uh, do you have any aspirations to travel around? 
to do fish places. Oh my like, god! I love you know. Originally, will uh, Bill well, Wetzel go international now? Dude, here's what. Here, this was my you plan. Won't even go west. To this fish. was this <laughs> was my <laughs> plan. This was my plan. I was gonna man. I was gonna find somebody. Dude, let's do a TV show, man. And we're gonna go around the world and surf fish. We're gonna go to fucking Australia, South America. We're gonna go all over to surf fish, right? It'd be the coolest fucking show, but. I never really pursued it. You were it. almost on a TV show, though. Alberta's a couple TV of them. show. You were a member of the TAC team. Oh, I remember <laughs> that. The tactical anglers. The TAC team. A force. <laughs> he said, oh, this is for real. They, they're they like, the guys that were doing it, producing it, they were like, oh, this is for real. This is for real. You know, we're going to definitely do it. You know, we do NASCAR. And uh, I don't know. It was another one that fell through you know they did uh could have been cool yeah it would have been cool we we did uh we were gonna do a guide house too like you remember guide house yeah that was a cool show that was a cool show and the fly uh, we're, fishing we're gonna show. do that and that never came through and then the book we're gonna i was gonna write the book right so you know i'm fucking all over the place you know i, I just don't have time Shocker. to write a book <laughs> <laughs> Who's got time to write a book? You know, I'm fishing. I'm doing this. When you're fishing all the time, you know, I, I don't have time to write a fucking book. So anyway, so the guy I wrote, I don't know, like three or four paragraphs. He's like, oh, you kind of all over the place. I want to hook you up with a ghost writer. And he's like, the one thing, the one thing I have to tell you about this guy is he's a surfer. I'm like, oh man, don't fucking hook me up with a surfer, you know? So you surfer? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, figures. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I meet this dude at the East Deck when the East Deck was there, and I go in. And he's talking, and he just, you know, he didn't know anything about friggin' fishing, really. I'm like, and I'm thinking, this guy's gonna write a book, and. He doesn't know anything. Uh, write my book, and he's not. He doesn't know anything about fishing. I'm like, you know, maybe I'll write a book. It'd be all over the place, but at least it'd be mine. So someday, maybe I'll do that. I think your book, the chapter titles <laughs> of a Bill Wetzel book, probably would be the most entertaining thing. I have an idea of what I want to do. I mean, I could just do. I could go in my log. My log goes back. Uh, you know, to 2002. I could go back my log, and you know. Do the story and then tell how to fish in a certain spots, you know. What's the craziest um, thing that's happened to one of your charters? Anyone you know, get? nothing, nothing huge, you know. Uh, cra- I had some shit happen to me, but my charters, I had, I took out this one guy, and uh, I'll tell you a couple of stories. I, one guy I took out, and I was 43 years old, and... Uh, now I'm 53, so we're you going won't. out, dude. We're going out in a nor'easter, and it was fucking blowing. It was like 45, maybe even 50 knots. The water was clean on the south side, and it was friggin' huge, right? It's pissing rain. It was a new moon. It was the middle of the night, and the we're going out, and the guy and I wasn't planning on going hard or anything, you know. I wouldn't want to kill him. He says, uh, he goes, uh, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 43. 43? 43? You're freaking old. I'm like, oh, yeah, motherfucker. I took this guy out, man. And I took him on a furthest rock I could find. And, dude, we got out there, and, and the peanut bunker, I just flown by. I think it was like October. Peanut bunker everywhere. No fish, though. And I just, man, I abused. He was a regular customer, too. I abused the shit out of him. And we were done in three hours. I'm like, let's go, man. Let's go. He's like, oh, no, man. I'm done. I'm done. I dropped him off. My kids kept fishing. <laughs> Has anybody bailed? Like immediately? No, you know I'm easy. You know, I mean, it's I I I I, I cater to like their needs. You know, I mean, I took I one one time I took out this dude. He was in his nineties, you know, and uh, he's like maybe ninety. I don't know. He was really old, and you know, I was going mellow with him, and I knew there'd be fish in the rat hole down at Kings, but getting him down there, you know, you got to walk down a little cliff and everything, so. 
And I'm like, well, I'd like to take you in a rat hole. Do you think you could do it? He's like, well, I'd like to do it before I die. So it was him and his son, you know? So, dude, I just... How old was the son? 79? Yeah, he was like 70, man. I don't know. Man, I took I him out mind. there, man. I just held his... I just held on to him, you know? I got him out there in the rat hole. You know, he was out in the dynamic of the surf, and he caught fish in the rat hole, you know? I just kind of, like, was right there with him. It was fucking awesome. Now, you take people out who are not experienced, like, on a little pre-mission don't you like to get them casting yeah like in the take, yeah 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 finger placement casting you know stance all that stuff you know to teach them the montauk chop yeah you know the, the famous montauk so why are you guys in montauk do that chop so we fucking fish in wind you know not unlike a lot of other people, they just, oh, it's windy. We don't want to go out. We fish in wind in our face all the time. Like I'm like I'm out there. <laughs> You're out there. Um, you fish in wind in your face all the time. Oh, my God. It's my favorite. Yeah, it's the best, man. It's the best. When it's blowing and the rain feels like needles, man. paint gets ripped off your car. Oh, my God. When you, paint, when you drive home and you're like, wait a minute, that side of my car is a lot duller than it was. Or somebody opens your car door and a fucking thing rips open and dents in your corner panel and your hood. And you need to get a new hood and new corner panel. That's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> we were fishing one time and it was easily 50 miles an hour gusting maybe a little bit more and there were three dudes in a truck from pennsylvania taking turns one guy at a time would come down and fish next to us and like because they couldn't they were like freaking out like one guy would come and he would like can't couldn't handle anymore run back to the truck and get warm and then the minute one of us would hook up like someone else would like run down try it give up run back and this went on like all night we were on the north side once during a storm and uh it was you know we fished all morning and we fished all and now it was like into the evening and it was blowing 55 knots it was fucking huge water and everybody had left right and we're out there banging just schoolies but one after another and the, the, I, I don't know if it was Tom or one of the guys over there, you know, one of the uh, security guys over at Montauk. He comes up, he goes, he rolls out the window, he screams out, what the fuck are you guys doing? You guys, the park is closed. You need to get out of here. We're like, oh, left. But we're killing fish, man. I mean, it's fishing in that kind of weather is the best. Yeah. It is the best. Mm-hmm. All right, Bill. All right, brother. I'm going to get your plugs. We're going to plug like a real radio show. Yeah. Surfratsball.com. www.surfratsball.com. That's right. My log goes back 20 years, right? Yeah. 35 bucks for the year. Correct. Reading the beach stuff. Yep. 35 bucks uh, for the year. It's undeniably Videos. one of the best. No bullshit. Uh, Stripe best surf fishing websites that's out there. Thanks, man. On the web today. Um, big contest. Going on right, right now. now, right now, you got till June 15th to sign up. Yeah, it's probably going to be due. It'll probably, be over. Yeah, probably over but by the time you air this. You'll have time to check out the shindig at Sag Harbor. Yeah, July 21st. Yeah, follow Bill on Instagram. He loves oh it. Oh my God, come on. He's so good at it. He's really hating on this it. This guy, Tom, got me into this. <laughs> this guy right here. It's and I can't I can't do it, man. It's Bill like, is just tearing it up on Instagram. Oh, God. The amount of followers and likers he has is incredible. He's I throw it out the friggin' window. He's hashtagging like a maniac. Um, <laughs> I do like two hashtags. <laughs> he posts like, some good I'm videos. Like, what the hell do these hashtags do? I don't get it. In your, in your defense, you are 54 years old. <laughs> no, thanks. It's 53. 53. It's not, you know, it's, you know, you're on the border. At least I'm like, not dying in my beard. Oh. oh. <laughs> but I look amazing. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Cut that bad boy keychain back. <laughs> and that's that, man. We appreciate you coming down. What's right. your handle there? Thanks. My handle? At yeah. What's your Instagram thing? At Bill Wetzel? Oh, I don't even know. Bill Wetzel 50? I have no idea. He doesn't even know his name. Oh, my God. I don't know. Terrible. When we do the rap. Terrible. Bill Wetzel 74 or some shit. I don't know. See what know. I'm talking about, people? <laughs> my old Montauk name was... I had two Montauk names. Uh, Rocky Point Bill. Because everybody gets a Montauk name. You know that, right? I'm Fish a, out there not. I was Rocky Point Bill. And then I was split ring. Because I put split rings on everything. I hated split ring. Like, don't call me that, man. That's a good split one. Split ring. Do you have a name now? 
No, no, they, I, no, no nothing. Unfortunately. Do they still do that? Well, uh, I try to name people. Like Five Mile Bob, I named his ass. <laughs> you know, you're out there enough. You got to have a name. You tree know? Man? Tree Man. I don't know where. Well, he does trees. He trims trees. You know? Joe the Plumber. He's a plumber. Rollerblade and the perv. <laughs> the perv. The perv, man. Yes. Steve the perv. <laughs> man. Steve the perv. All right. Yeah. All right. Good okay. job. Thanks, bro. All right, man. Thanks, brother. Well, thanks for working your way out here on yeah. zero sleep. Time to go. I'm, I'm fine. We appreciate it. Take care of that bad boy keychain. Yeah, man. Bad. Thanks. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, any questions or hit us up. We are grateful that you took time from your busy day to listen to the Surfcasters Journal Night Shift Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, we would love if you would share it with your fishing buddies and leave a rating and review to whatever app you use to listen to us. Your feedback and ratings help other surfcasters discover our podcast. Also check out our publication dedicated to surf fishing, Surfcasters Journal Magazine at surfcastersjournal.com. Tight lines and good fishing.